For everyone out there who admired the Ford GT, you have got to back up and see where it came from and where it might be going. I'm Michelle Ray Hall with The Drive Channel and thedrivechannel.com. Last episode, we took a lingering look at the 2012 Mercedes AMG CLS 63. This episode, it's the Ford GT and the rumored replacement for this American supercar. In the early 60s, Enzo Ferrari wanted to be able to run his racing effort unencumbered, and the street versions of his cars were holding him down. The sales of those cars did pay for the racing, but the manufacturing was hard to keep up with, and Enzo had only one desire, to race his Ferraris. He contacted Ford about purchasing the company, and several million dollars were spent by Ford to audit Ferrari in anticipation of the sale. Well, it was all for nothing. Enzo Ferrari backed out at the last minute. Now some say it was because Ford wanted control over the racing effort, and some say that a clause in the contract stated Ferrari would have to submit budgets to Ford. But the biggest single reason that we found is that the Italian press was ready to burn Ferrari at a stake if he sold to an American company. To say that this upset Henry Ford II is like saying that breaking wind in church is cool. Henry Ford was so angry that he said, and I quote, all right, we'll beat his ass. We're going to race him, unquote. Well, this would be the ultimate slap in the face at Enzo Ferrari to be beaten by an American car manufacturer, but Ford did just that. Four Le Mans victories in a row. And without going through a lengthy process of recounting the testing, the trials and tribulations that Ford went through to get there, suffice to say that Carroll Shelby Several British chassis builders and even some Italian parts suppliers were involved. The GT40 ended up being a brute. Several people died in the process of making this car competitive, but ultimately the GT40 racing car was a Ferrari beater. As quickly as Ford made its point, it left the Le Mans series. Fast forward to 2002 when the GT40 concept car was unveiled. The press was astonished. This car looked almost exactly like the 60s race car, but was almost unnoticeably larger and actually employed modern day technology. The new name was GT, not GT40. The 40 came from the height of the original racing car. From 2005 until 2006, 4,038 GTs were produced. The car had made its mark. Even Jeremy Clarkson of the hit BB series Top Gear couldn't fault the car and was impressed at what could be done with simplicity and engineering. This car had a 5.4 liter V8 that was supercharged, producing 550 horsepower and 500 pounds of torque. This meant that this car would pull its power from very low in the gear range to very high in the gear range. It was usable for the street. People could actually fit in it and could beat cars of its size and class, including several of the Ferrari models, at sometimes half the price. Under the skin, this car differed from the 60s GT40 technology in every way, but it stayed true to the design heritage. It had a short run, but it made its point. The question is now, will they ever build a replacement? In an interview with Topspeed.com, the CEO of Ford, Alan Mulally, was asked if a successor was coming. His underlings dodged the question, but he said, and I quote again, All I know is if the ground is wet, they won't let me drive it, and that vehicle levitates, unquote. And that is all he would say. We say it's long overdue. Go for it. I'm Michelle Rahal with The Drive Channel and thedrivechannel.com. Next episode, let's look at the new Ferrari FF. This is one cool car.